Hello guys, thank you for tuning in to another segment of Rivera Fine Art Studios. This channel is really designed to kind of go through some of the, uh, the more traditional techniques of fine art. And if you en are enjoying the content, please make sure to like the video and hit the subscribe button. And also be sure to tell your friends about this channel. I am going to start posting videos um, a little bit more frequently on a weekly basis that will really focus specifically on um, old master drawing and painting techniques. And I'm also going to be building up uh, a library of classes which I'll be offering on my, uh, my school, my online school, which can be found at www dot Rivera Fine Art Studios dot Thinkific dot com. And uh, in, in those classes, I go through a lot of the techniques that I discuss on this channel in much more depth. Uh, so a lot of these videos are sped up um, and edited, whereas uh, on, on my online school, I'm showing that content more in real time. So if you're interested, uh, once again, in what's being offered here, please be sure to check out that website and I'll provide a link for that in the description below. Uh, I also offer uh, live classes through Zoom and those can be found on my website. I have a, a schedule of those classes on my personal website, which is www.riverafinearts.com and I'll also put a link for that in the description below. Okay, so let's get into uh, what I wanted to talk about today. Uh, today, I wanted to discuss how the practice of drawing improved my paintings. So I'm going to start with this example, which is a drawing done in pencil and charcoal. So one of the most important things in representing three-dimensional form is understanding how light falls upon form. And this is something that I'm always looking at and always searching for. Uh, so value is uh, the degree of lightness or darkness in a picture. And that is something that uh, it was really a breakthrough when I kind of discovered the importance of value and how that actually affects color. When looking at paintings, I'm always drawn to pieces that have a very strong tonal design. Um, and the color is very often secondary to the tonal uh, depiction of the subject. So in this drawing, I was very interested in representing a strong chiaroscuro lighting, um, which just means very strong a contrast between the lights and the shadows. Uh, but I'm also thinking about the local value and color of the flesh. Now, this drawing is actually um, a demonstration that I am doing for one of my classes on my Thinkific site. Uh, so I've already put up a couple of episodes for that class, and um, I am really working on trying to get this finished. So uh, if you are interested in learning how I actually created this drawing, you can check out my Thinkific site. But one of the main things I was focusing on in this drawing was the subtlety within the lights and how that really uh, contrasted against the very strong darks. So by utilizing values in every area of this drawing, um, I am observing that nothing is truly white. So as we look at the light sections, we can see that there's really uh, a very subtle depiction of lighter value tones in areas such as the nose and on uh, the cheek. Um, there's a very, very subtle manipulation of values which uh, helps to show the form and also shows that the form is in the areas of uh, where the light is hitting it directly. This is something that I'm, I'm always very conscious of now uh, when, I, when I draw. And uh, I'm trying to think of the fact that every color has an inherent value. And if we take the time to really observe this, we can begin to add 
a sense of color to a, to a drawing that uh, is done with gray tones only. So, you know, this is something that I, I worked with for a very long time to sort of get a sense of this relationship between value and color and how to achieve this idea of color in a tonal drawing. What's nice about uh, combining mediums like uh, charcoal and pencil is that each, uh, each medium produces a, a subtle uh, difference in temperature. So if we look at the pencil areas, we can see that those grays are somewhat cool when we compare that to some of the charcoal areas. And this is a, a very, very subtle difference, and it, it, it may not be easy to see if you're not used to working with, uh, with color subtleties, but each medium uh, does produce not only a, a different value, but there's also a difference in temperature. So I think of the charcoal as being uh, very warm, and uh, I see some brown in that, whereas I think of the pencil as being cooler. I see uh, much cooler grays uh, when I lay down the, the pencil. So as I started to kind of explore this idea of very limited or very neutral color, um, I started to extend my palette a little bit and I noticed that I could really create uh, the same effect in a painting where I was using very few colors. So I think it's really good to sort of develop a practice where you are using um, limited color uh, before you dive into a full palette, um, just to understand how to create this uh, relationship of warm and cool without using a really extended palette. Um, we can get a lot more out of the subtlety if we use fewer colors and mix them. So this is a drawing that I did. Uh, this is for another class actually that's offered on my Thinkific site where I am in fact using three colors on toned paper. And uh, this is done with black, white, and uh, red pastels. So when I'm painting, I will often uh, do some type of an underpainting, either in uh, gray tones or, uh, or limited palette, uh, such as you see here. And then I'll continue to add more color on top of that layer. And let me show you uh, an example of one of my paintings. Now this is a very finished piece, um, so there's really a lot of detail that has been built up uh, on top of this in many thin layers to create the subtlety of color. So this is actually a technique referred to as verdaccio, um, and it's, it involves a, an underpainting of green tones. So I used green uh, as my initial layer here, and I did this monochromatically. So I was really, once again, looking closely at values and um, trying to create the right type of value, the right degrees of lightness and darkness in the piece. And then um, I built my color up uh, semi-transparently on top of that. So you can see it the most uh, right here in this area of the shoulder. Um, in, in many of these transitions, you can see there's this strong influence of green um, you know, even in, in some of these half tones, but also even in the lights, um, we can really see that. And then there's just these subtle uh, little uh, strokes of broken color laid on top of that. And in some places they're very, very transparent. And in other places they're a little bit more opaquely. Uh, this was a technique that was commonly used in the uh, pre-Renaissance, uh, some of the early uh, fresco painters, uh, artists like Giotto, uh, used this and um, a lot of times this was done uh, with with egg tempera so uh, some very very early um, pre-renaissance paintings you'll you'll see this um, and what's nice about this is the green really does complement the flesh tones that you are going to lay on top of it 
uh, you know, it's, it's almost a complementary color if you think of uh, green and uh, red or pink uh, would be the complementary of the green. So this is something that uh, I really uh, enjoy doing and I'm going to be putting together a course on this as well, this technique uh, in particular. Um, but it still does involve an understanding of the value relationships. So that kind of brings me back to what I was saying in the beginning, how important value is when we're even thinking about color. There is a, a value structure that you have to be aware of when you are painting. And that is going to help to give a much uh, clearer and uh, more concise representation of the form. And it's also very helpful for just working out compositions. So I hope you found this video useful and uh, I really, really appreciate the support and the great comments that you guys have. So uh, please feel free to uh, ask any questions you have and uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and if you like this video, um, make sure you uh, hit that like button and uh, also sub subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm going to be posting more classes um, every uh, Monday. I'm actually going to be doing a whole series of um, short videos, uh, 10 to 15 minute long videos on different techniques. Uh, but if you want more in-depth content, um, please make sure you check out my online school. Uh, and that website, once again, is www.riverafineartstudios.thinkific.com. And that link will be in the description below. And I'm going to actually be doing a whole series on old master techniques, um, which I'm going to be offering on my online school. So if there's any particular artists that uh, you're interested in uh, learning more about, about their, uh, their technique or just a particular type of art, uh, please make sure you leave uh, a comment uh, below and I will, um, I might design a course around that. I also offer live classes. So uh, once again, if you want more information on that, uh, you can check out my website, which is www.riverafinearts.com. And I have my, my schedule of ongoing online classes posted uh, on that website. So uh, once again, thank you very much, um, and I look forward to seeing you guys in another uh, video. And in the meantime, happy drawing and painting.